Hello my friends, today we have a fun video for you in which we'll be talking and speculating about one of the biggest mysteries so far in Amazon's The Rings of Power series. The mysterious, the slightly bizarre, simultaneously intriguing and perplexing, Middle Earth's own incomprehensible extraterrestrial, the one and only Meteor Man. Alright, alright, contain your excitement, folks. That's right, we're talking about Meteor Man, the controversial yet also intriguing character that Amazon have officially dubbed the Stranger. In today's video, we'll be going through all the possible candidates for just who this interesting character might be. Also, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. First off though, for those who aren't familiar with who this Meteor Man is, the Vanity Fair article a while back described a mysterious man who has fallen from the sky and is soon discovered by the young Harfoot girls, Nori Brandyfoot and Poppy Proudfellow. The community has been rife with speculation since we originally leaked this information, and nobody seems to have been able to crack the code just yet. To be fair, there are no real hints in Tolkien's Legendarium that could point to the identity of this character who arrives on a meteor, or meteorite, rather. Some popular guesses have been Tilion, the Maya of the Moon, Erendil crashing down from the heavens on Vingilot, a blue wizard, a certain grey wizard even, or possibly Glorfindel. We know that the Istari, the wizards, some of the most powerful beings in Middle-earth, most likely all arrived via ship from Valinor, which would seem to eliminate that possibility, but surely only a being of such power as the Istari could survive a collision like this. The man who seems to be being pulled away from the meteor crash site by a Harfoot sports a bushy beard and unkempt hair. But looking at clean-shaven portraits of the actor, one could infer that he bears some semblance to a Lord of Gifts. The more we speculate about this enigmatic figure, the more we just seem to harbor further questions. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Our first candidate is, of course, Gandalf the Grey. Having just crash-landed from the sky, going 25 kilometers a second aside, a character who seemingly doesn't communicate well, speaks in riddles perhaps, and forgets details of the world around them, is certainly reminiscent of a particular white wizard who was sent back to us until his task is done. The wool and grey sleeves and beard we see of the character in the poster, and the last shot of the teaser, also call to mind our favorite wizard. Could these be clues as to the true identity of the mystery man? The connection of a Second Age Istar to the early Hobbits could certainly be quite serendipitous, and a nice way to call back to Tolkien's use of repetition in his work. Gandalf was actually name-dropped and mentioned by the showrunners, so this does make Gandalf as Meteor Man perhaps a bit too obvious, and potentially for this reason one of the options that would be the first to go. But nevertheless, using Gandalf does have its pluses for the showrunners, especially because of the link between Peter Jackson's trilogy and playing on nostalgia, just like the inclusion of Harfoots. However, if one of our previously discussed leaks about the potential of this character becoming evil over the course of the show come to fruition, it may be one of the Blue Wizards instead. As a matter of fact, speaking of the Blue Wizards, they are next up on our list of speculations. Alatar and Palando, Morinetar and Romestamo, Palacendo and Hymenar, whatever you'd like to been theorized and speculated by fans for quite some time, almost becoming a fan favorite by now. The obvious choice for Meteor Man would be the Blue Wizards, but one issue is that there is only one Meteor Man and not two, so that would be unlikely unless the other one arrives in a later season. Still, the Blue Wizards do match the criteria of the most recent leaks of Meteor Man not being wholly good, and the show can take the angle of the Blue Wizards eventually becoming corrupted and evil in the East, if they wish. So there is a lot to explore there. If you put Daniel Wayman in a nice and funky Blue Wizards costume whilst keeping the long beard, it would work perfectly, but maybe not as perfectly as Sauron. Now, Meteor Man being Sauron is not perfect per se, but it does have the strongest evidence at the moment. First off, we don't have an idea as to who Sauron is so far in the show, so maybe the re-emergence of evil in Middle-earth physically arrives and on a meteorite to top it all off. After the War of Wrath at the end of the First Age, Sauron escaped and went into hiding, and his exact arrival into Middle-earth is not explicitly stated in the text, but through the means of meteor traveling and falling from the sky, then that would be a grand introduction. As mentioned earlier, there is some supposed evidence that Meteor Man could be Sauron. This is through the latest shots from the trailer, which show the naked and bare man 
huddled in the middle of the crater, and the symbol of the Eye of Sauron is visible on the ground below. Is this possibly a nod to Meteor Man later becoming Sauron? Again, in regards to the leak mentioned before, Meteor Man has forgotten his past and doesn't really know his purpose, but we do learn that he might be evil later on. So therefore, could Meteor Man have forgotten that he was Sauron, and then slowly throughout the season remembers his purpose and cause? However, this could present a conflict with the existing lore. If Meteor Man is indeed Sauron, then his involvement with the Harfoots in the Second Age would mean that he was already aware of Hobbits later on in the Third Age when they played a larger role during the events of the War of the Ring, even though it's suggested in the text that Sauron wasn't aware of Hobbits. But there is a case to be made for how this could work though. Perhaps Sauron was aware of the Harfoots, who would later become Hobbits, and at that time in the Second Age, he didn't deem them a threat or an obstacle to his rise to power as the Dark Lord. This would make his defeat at the hands of a humble hobbit in the Third Age all the more ironic, and it would reinforce the theme present in both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, that while those with power and might often overlook hobbits for their short stature and love of simplicity, their courage and humility will ultimately win the day. Still, there are some theories that this Meteor Man character may be someone totally different and completely unexpected. Given the bombastic, or uh, I'm sorry, a bombastic entrance on a meteor, some fans speculate that it could be none other than. Hey, do, merry do, ring a dong, dillo, ring a dong, hop along, fell out the willow, Tom Bomb, Jolly Tom, Tom Bombadillo. A classic and assured fan favorite, Tom Bombadil is another potential choice for being the Meteor Man, and would probably be one of the most popular choices for the audience. Amazon does have the rights to use him, as he's in the Fellowship of the Ring, which they have the rights to, and it would be an ambitious opportunity for Amazon, given that no other film or TV adaptation prior has included Tom Bombadil, for the reason that it might stick out of the story or stop the momentum of the plot, but in an extended form TV series which doesn't have the kind of time constraints that a film adaptation does, and, for that matter, one that does seem to be playing more into the fantastical elements of Middle-earth, this could be an interesting possibility. But the one problem, of course, that does exist with this possibility is in the text itself, in The Fellowship of the Ring, where it states that he arrived on Arda before the river and the trees, which means he must already be in Middle-earth by the time of the Second Age. To counter this, if this meteorite has somehow come from within Middle-earth and not from the sky, then it could potentially work with Tom Bombadil being Meteor Man. Maybe, unbeknownst to us, a meteor is just the way that Tom Bombadil gets around when he's not hopping around on his own two feet. But all jokes aside, in all honesty, this is quite unlikely. A more likely scenario is that Meteor Man could be a fallen Maya, or one of Morgoth's servants from the First Age, which he was able to convince to join him. One being that fits this category is, of course, a Balrog, and a lot of Meteor Man's powers so far do seem to be fire-based. In some clips, he's even seen consuming or exhaling fire, so he could have some innate fire abilities which would match the characteristics of a Balrog. The biggest and most obvious problem with this is that he physically does not look like a Balrog at all, but maybe McPain has found a way to resolve this issue. We've already seen the appearance of one on screen in the latest trailer, so who knows? But to piggyback off this idea, a more credible theory is that instead of a random Balrog, it could be Durin's Bane. He could be visiting Khazad-dûm fairly soon and related to whatever the dwarves will be dealing with in this show, as there's not much in the source material. The problem with this is just that Durin's Bane does not come to Khazad-dûm in the Second Age, only later on in the Third Age. The next candidate is the Man in the Moon, which, theoretically, in regards to the source material, is the best-fitting character for Meteor Man. In the folklore of the Hobbits, the Man in the Moon is an old bean and built his minaret there. Due to this link with Hobbits and actually being in the sky, the Man in the Moon is an interesting possibility, as the Harfoots were the ancestors of the Hobbits, and maybe this is how the tale and folklore of in the Third Age. Of course, the main problem with this is that a character like the Man in the Moon might not make a very compelling addition to the plot. He's also incredibly unknown, so it wouldn't take very many boxes. 
it could be possible that Meteor Man may be one of these other characters we've speculated, and yet also be the inspiration for the Man in the Moon story among hobbits. So, in a way, he could be both. For now, we can just look up into the sky and to the moon to search for the answers. However, the Man in the Moon is not the only character in the sky. There are two more, in fact. Firstly, Tilion the Maya, who guided the moon and in Valinor was a hunter for the company of Arome, but took up the task of guiding the moon in the sky. We know that he was reckless and at times not really taking the right path, so maybe one time he was reckless, he accidentally fell from the sky and landed in Middle-earth. This could be one of the times when in fact he came too close to the sun, as he was often drawn by the splendor of Aryan, the sun. Quote, the flame of Anar scorched him, and the island of the moon was darkened. So maybe this happens again, which causes him to fall from the sky. Of course, one drawback is, of course, in the show, the moon still seems to be fine, which suggests it's still being guided by Tilion, so the theory wouldn't really hold. The most famous man in the sky is, of course, Erendil, on his ship Vingelot in the sky, one of the brightest stars. We know that this statue is him, and he is the father of Elrond. But that's about as far as that goes, and we don't really have any evidence that Eärendil would have come down to Middle-earth in the Second Age at any point. Maybe this is a more comical suggestion than a serious one, but perhaps Eärendil was drunk driving, or rather drunk flying one night, and the rest is history. But to end on a more serious note, one character that we know arrives in the Second Age is, of course, Glorfindel, speaking of characters that have been omitted from prior Tolkien adaptations. After his death to the Balrog during the fall of Gondolin, Glorfindel, just like Gandalf in the Third Age, was sent back to Middle-earth, and maybe this is Eru sending the fan favorite back, via a meteor. The glaring problem is that, of course, Meteor Man looks like an old man and has a long beard and weathered clothes, but from the beginning, many thought Daniel Wayman could be an elf, and he does have the features for it, such as his ears, so maybe with a little touch-up at the end of Season 1 and the shaving of his beard, he would be transformed to now look more like his original form and the elven warrior that we all know and love. So with that, that's all that we have for today. So once again, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Let us know your theories as to who Meteor Man, aka The Stranger, could be, and if we missed your potential candidates for the identity of Meteor Man. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, and until next time, Namarie Melonin.